a seat for the Messiah. Jesus went and sat down. Not where the priest sits. But he sat down where the Messiah sits. And everybody looked at him like, what are you doing? And he said, today has the scripture been fulfilled right in front of your eyes? In other words, I'm the one y'all been looking for. Let me close my Sunday school lesson. Say it with me, obedience. obedience. Say it with me, affirmation. affirmation. Say it with me, testing. Affirmation. Shout power. power. And shout liberty. Oh, once again, in closing, Jesus. Mm, Jesus is. Uh, he obeys the Father. The Holy Ghost descends. You know, sometimes what cracks me up about church folk is we want to speak to demons and devils and we want them to obey us. Luke said, bind here, get out of here. And they're looking back at you saying, you don't walk in obedience to the Father. You don't obey your pastor. You don't obey the bishop. I mean, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. But... He, hmm, trying to push me, I'm trying to. he obeys the father. Then the father speaks words of affirmation. That's my boy in whom I am well pleased. And then he goes to a testing experience comes out in the power of the Holy Ghost. Now he's free to proclaim what God has decreed. Just allow me for a moment as I take my descent to look at verse 1 of St. Luke chapter 4 once again cause the Holy Ghost is mentioned twice in that first verse. Uh -huh. And uh, don't touch it because I'll get happy. I'm trying to teach, but I feel something pushing me. Uh, and Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost. Uh, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit. Uh, yeah. don't, don't touch it because I'll get happy for real. Into the wilderness. Uh, yeah. Notice he was led. Uh, the synoptic writer John said that the Holy Ghost driveth him yeah. Yeah. into the wilderness. That does not mean that he went into the wilderness unwillingly. No, no, because this wilderness experience uh, was not by accident. It was a, mm, a showdown with the enemy. I want you to think of it this way. The Holy Ghost led Jesus to the wilderness the Holy Ghost mm, led Jesus through the wilderness and, and the Holy Ghost led Jesus out of the wilderness there was never a moment when he was by himself I want you to know tonight that there is never a moment while you are in your wilderness experience that the Holy Ghost has left you. I don't know how you feel about it tonight, but now that he's been with me so long, 
I don't know how I could ever live without him. That's why every now and then I pray, Lord, whatever you do, please don't take your spirit away from me. Can you shout yes? I want you to know that the first verse says that he went in full of the Holy Ghost but the 14th verse says that he came out in the power something happened to Jesus while he was in that wilderness I want to examine with you tonight that the same thing that happened to Jesus while he was in his wilderness is the same thing that will happen to you now, when you learn how to stand your storm now, when you learn how to stand your tests uh, when people have been mean to you uh, and when people have lied on you uh, and when people have tried to ruin your integrity uh, they've tried to assassinate your character uh, but you said I'm not going to get evil even with you uh, even though you meant it to me for evil God wish I had somebody to shout God I guess we might as well have a little church God meant it for my good yes Jesus was laid that he might be tested he was tested that he might be prepared he was prepared that he might be empowered and the same thing happens to you we haven't done a lot of talking to each other tonight so come on let's preach together and grab your neighbor by the hand and put your preaching voice on and shout oh neighbor you are led into the wilderness that you might be tested you are tested that you might be prepared you are prepared that you might be empowered yes but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be my witness everybody shout yes oh yes I close now by encouraging somebody in the wilderness experience that God does not intend for you to stay on the mountain we love the mountain experience we love the beautiful breeze that blows across our faces while we're on top of the mountain the mountain is a place of joy the mountain is a place of victory but you can't stay on the mountain forever sooner or later you gotta come down into the valley because that's where the problem is you gotta come down into the valley but that's where the people are you've got to come down off the mountain and into a wilderness experience but I say to you tonight if you go in full of the Holy Ghost you're gonna come out in the power of the Holy Ghost there's something about your struggle there's something that happens to you while you're in the wilderness when you bless those that curse you when you pray for those that despitefully use you who am I preaching to you know what it means to have your struggles but what has made you who you are today is what you have struggled with give somebody a high five and say neighbor don't feel sorry for me while I'm in my struggle my struggle 
is giving me power my struggle is releasing the anointing of God that's in my life my struggle is taking me to a higher level my struggle is carrying me to another dimension who am I preaching to who knows what it means to cry in the midnight hour and it seems like you don't have a friend but while yes while you're on your knees with tears running down your face the Holy Ghost who has the Holy Ghost the Holy Ghost will show up and he'll give you one word from the Lord and that's what I tell you that one word from God can change your whole life give somebody a high five tell them one word from the Lord can change your situation I would not be here if I didn't have a word over my life you've been surrounded by enemies but the Holy Ghost gave you a word when my enemy and my fault came upon me to eat up my flesh they stumbled and they fell though 